Hey everyone, if you're new to Blender and you want to know how to render your first animation, this is the video for you. So I've basically created a rotating cube. This is going to be my animation for this video. Now, let's say I want to render this. I can go to animation and here I can basically take a look again and see if everything is correct. You don't have to go to this tab, but this is what I prefer basically to, to go to when I'm working on animations. And if I'm happy with everything and my animation is what I want it to be, I basically go to Output Properties. And here we have a few options. Now, first off, you can decide which format you want to use. In this case, we are using HD, which is 9020 by 1080. And this is important, make sure to put this on 100. If it's on 50%, it's going to scale it down by 50%. Also, your aspect ratio can be adjusted here. You can also turn on render region and choose a user-defined area where you want to render. But in this case, we don't want to do that. We basically want to leave these two, two off. Um, another element is your frame rate. So this is basically how many images do you want your animation to have per second. 24 is basically fine if you're going for the filmish look. Most movies use 24 frames per second and that kind of has that blurry effect that makes them have this filmish look. You could also go, go for 30 FPS or 30 FPS depending on what you do. Now, we come to the frame range, and this is a crucial part and something that a lot of people miss and don't understand what to do with. Now, something that's important to know, the frame range is used a lot when you're rendering image sequences. Now, when you're rendering an animation in Blender, we usually don't want to export a AVI or a, a AVI RAW or a video format. The problem with those files is that you can't really easily change frames in between them. So let me explain. Let's say you have an animation which goes from frame 1 to 250. If you do an image sequence, the advantage of that is that if you have an error between frame 100 and 105, you can just tell Blender to render frame 100 to 105. And it will output an image sequence for this frame range. And you can basically replace these with the images which had an error in your initial render. So that's the advantage of having an image sequence and a frame range control. In this case, since it's my first render, I want to use a start of 1 and an end of 250 because I basically assume that my whole animation is correct and I'm not gonna have any problems. But sometimes you have things like reflection, you know, with some things that you can't really see till you make that final render. And with that said, we basically come to the output. Here you can decide where you want to save your uh, project. In this case, I've created a new folder called Render Tutorial, and I'm going to save it there. And the file format, that I want to export it on is PNG. We can click on this and as I have mentioned before, you can change this to anything else. But I would advise you to, especially if you're having transparent images, to just use PNG. And you can also adjust if it needs to be black and white, RGB or RGBA. And this is important if you have those alpha channels which you want to export. Now you also have the color depth and compression. And once you're happy and everything is done, all you have to do is basically go to render and click on render animation or click on control F12. And you will see that the animation starts and that Blender is doing what you asked it to do. Now that our render is finished, we should have a lot of images which should get turned into an image sequence. We can do this in our favorite video editing software. In this case, I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro, but you could also use DaVinci Resolve to achieve the same result. I'm going to go to File, Import, and here I can see that I have all the images which just got rendered in Blender. 
All I have to do is click on the first one, make sure that image sequence is on, and then click on open. Now, sometimes what might happen is that you see the wrong frame rate because Adobe Premiere or your own video editing tool is assuming a certain frame rate. We can change this by clicking on edit or right clicking, going to modify and clicking on Interpre interpret footage. Based on this, we can say that it's 24 FPS and we click on OK and the FPS gets adjusted. And now we have our animation, which we can use in Adobe Premiere simply by drag and dropping it. And that's how you can render a Blender animation and get it to your favorite video software. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe or like this video and leave a comment if you have something to share with us. Cheers.